on this Tuesday, April 17th. It is now about 4.33. Can you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence after? Thank you, Annette. Commissioner, can we have a roll call? Soto Presley? Here. Casperky? Nevejas? Here. Myricks? Here. Aubridge? Here. Uh, for the record, we have four present, one absent. Okay, number three, declaration of conflict of interest. Okay, number four, communications. None were received. Number five is our minutes from March 20th, 2018. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes for the Hammond Redevelopment Commission for March 20th, 2018. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the minutes from March 20th, 2018. Is there any questions or discussion on these minutes? Okay, roll call, please. Soto Presley? Yes. Casperky? Nevejas? Yes. Myricks? Yes. Hopperidge? Yes. Motion passes. Four yes, one absent. Okay. All right, number six, our homebound con conditional forgivable loan approval. Looks like we might have six applicants. Yes. Um, all I hear, with the exception of Yuri Feliciano, of 413 Lewis Street, and she requested come to come to the May 1st meeting. Okay. And I'd also like it to go on record that Eva Huerta is a city employee. All right, can they uh, come forward? <laughs> Hello. Hello. <Hi. laughs> you must be Eva. I'm Eva. <laughs> so, Eva, how did you hear about this program? I'm a city employee. <laughs> The next, the young lady or whoever, yeah, can you stand up? And your name, ma'am? Kia Outlaw. And how did you hear about our program? Um, my realtor referred me. May I ask who's your realtor? Latoya Elston, in the 21st century. Okay. Okay. The gentleman behind. And your name? Juan Ledesma. And how did you hear about the program? Um, my mortgage company had told me about it. Who's your mortgage? You? Cross Country Mortgage. Cross Country Mortgage. Yes. Okay. Great. Good afternoon, well, evening. My name is Leona Jordan, and I was referred to your program via my realtor and lender, Cross Country Mortgage in Luann with Berkshire Home, Hathaway Homes. Good, okay. And last but not least, you, sir. Hello, my name is Leon Pate, and my mom actually told me about it. She got in like two years ago. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. So all of you guys are first time home buyers? Yeah. yeah. Anyone else has any questions? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, I make a motion to approve the homebound conditional forgivable loan program for the six applicants uh, with the one coming to the May 1st uh, meeting, Yuri Feliciano. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the homebound conditional forgivable loan approval. Can we have a roll call on that? Soto Presley? Yes. Hesperky? Nevejas? Yes. Myricks? Yes. 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 Motion passes. Four yes, one absent. Welcome to Hammond. Yay. Thank you for coming. You guys may be excused if you like. Okay. okay, number seven is an emergency program for Robert and Linda Morandi at 7150 Van Buren. Yes, they weren't able to be here due to a medical emergency, but stated they will come to the May 1st meeting. Okay. Okay, I'm confused. Uh, why are we dealing with an air conditioning system in April? 
Well, the applicant for the emergency program, the doctor has a, the applicant has a letter from the doctor stating that due to his health problems, he has to have central air. Central air in April? You can't even run an AC unit this time of year. True, but it was first come, first serve with the emergency, so the... Okay. Mr. President, I make a motion to accept the emergency program for Robert and Linda Morandi, 7150 Van Buren. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the emergency program for Robert and Linda Morandi at 7150 Van Buren. We have a roll call on that. Soto Presley? Yes. Kasperky? Nevejas? Yes. Myricks? Yes. Popridge? Yes. Motion passes. Four yes, one absent. Okay, number eight's a roof program conditional loan approval for Stella Guzman, 7512 Harrison Avenue. Welcome. Thank you. Questions? Has this program been explained to you? Uh, no, it, it's been explained uh, fully to me. I understand. Mr. President, I make a motion to accept the roof program conditional loan approval for Stella Guzman for 7512 Harrison Avenue. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the roof program, conditional loan approval for Stella Guzman at 7512 Harrison Avenue. We have a roll call on that. Soto Presley? Yes. Kasperky? Nevejas? Yes. Myricks? Yes. Popridge? Yes. Motion passes. Four yes, one absent. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. for coming. Okay, number nine is an approval of supplemental agreement letter for the professional services with SEH. Commissioners, in your packet, you will see, you will find an agreement letter for professional services with, for SEH. As you can see from the information that's submitted on the letter, it appears that we have some outstanding invoices. However, we've exceeded the amount of the original contract. We have Dan Bodich in the, off, in the audience today if you have any questions for him. But we are asking that we extend our contract not only to cover our, um, the existing invoices or the outstanding invoices, but also we have them working on a couple of uh, very important projects that we want to sort of see to the finish line. So we want to also extend this contract enough just to get through those projects, and then we can uh, sign another uh, agreement at a later date. Dan, did you have any questions, or did you have, did you want to say anything? Yeah, I want to welcome Mr. Bowditch. Oh, it's always a pleasure to be here. I wanted to just uh, state it's always a pleasure to work with the Hammond Redevelopment Commission, and it's not one of my choices to come before any commission and ask for an amendment to a supplemental letter agreement. But I did want to state that over the past year, SEH through economic development has assisted not only the redevelopment department and commission, but also the economic development department in the city in numerous projects. And I can go down the list of those with you. But a lot of times, the amount of work that goes into those projects is extensive. And as Attorney Westland and Ms. Tarver could, could uh, support, is that we never get an easy one. <laughs> they always seem more complicated, more detailed, mm -hmm. and I've always stated that from my perspective, my job is to make their job easier and hopefully make your jobs easier and everything runs smoothly. So I feel that I've kept my end of the deal on that side. Most definitely. And uh, a lot of times when you've received information, it's the information you need to make informed decisions as well as economic development to provide the appropriate financial incentivization. So I would ask for favorable consideration and 
with that, I just enjoy working with Hammond. We enjoy working with you as well. Yeah, your group has been very good and instrumental to our city. And there's a number of projects that are on the horizon, so I would love to continue to work with those. Excuse me, Mr. President and commission members. We don't seem to have that letter in our packet. It was this right here. Oh, okay. No. Is it? Yes. Oh, so it's a, okay, a worksheet. Okay. Right. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Because I missed it. Because I'm like, I don't have that. Well, it's got the invoice and uh, the amounts there. What I can do, if there's any confusion. I'm sorry, Mr. President. Okay. But if there's any confusion, what I can do is put it in a more formal letter to you and outline, you know, what, what the request is if you do not have that. Dan, just for the record, and I think it's pretty clear that when we hired uh, Mr. Bowditch and SEH a year ago, the scope of the work we were hiring them for was one thing, and it's been expanded significantly Several times. Uh, <laughs> over the course of the last year uh, but if just for the records if, if I understand this right um, there was an original agreement in February of 2017 for professional fees of 30,000 and then in September that was amended for an additional 35,000 yes and now we're we've just with the last invoice kind of just tipped over the top of that. Yes. Um, but what, if I understand Ms. Tarver correctly, there's also continued work that is gonna take you further over the top of that. So do we have an, and this may be an unfair question at this point, is there an estimate as to what some would do it? Or is it, is it are you ask, or are you asking that you, just build on a time basis. I could bill on a timely basis at this time, but I'd like to have a point where it's it's a not to exceed amount because from my perspective, how I see it as that keeps me honest on my side. It's not an open arrangement to you so that in the case where services are provided, typically when I hit a 90% level, I will let a client know, I'll let Africa know that <laughs> I'm at 90% of where we are at because I can't forecast an economic development prospect coming to the city. I can't, I can't forecast assistance for projects that have fires to be put out, uh, if not immediately, but soon for financial incentive purposes. So as stated, I can get to you a more formal request uh, other than what you have as a schedule before you. I would feel more comfortable doing that at this time. Um, and I think that would answer David's question also. So would you have a suggestion, and, and I think they, what I would suggest is that we approve a new not to exceed number above what we have um, and that you just write a letter and Africa can sign the letter so that there's some right. memorialization of it. Right. But, but do you have a suggestion as to what that number should be in light of what you're currently working on? Well, the first was 30,000. Right. The second amendment was 35,000. Correct. I would ask for 25000 now, and that would <laughs> get us through a point where we can finish assisting with what we need to, and then I can provide an updated uh, supplemental letter agreement for fiscal year 2018. Because okay. really, this is still last year, right. 2017. Right. Actually, he's working on something now that is um, <laughs> from previous years. Yes. So Dan is, oh, well, Mr. Bowditch from SDH is very good about helping us um, with uh, cleaning various things up. He's very good with helping us with working with um, not only potential investors with the city of Hammond, but also existing businesses. So he's always very good, he's very thorough. So I definitely would recommend extending his contract so he can sort of get us to the finish line regarding some major projects that we have on the forefront. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the supplemental agreement for professional service with SCH not, with the agreement not to exceed $25,000. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the approval of supplemental agreement letter for professional services with SCH. Is there another second? 
another additional 25,000, not to exceed that. May I roll call on that, please? Soto Presley? Yes. Esperkey? Nevejas? Yes. Myricks? Yes. Yes, motion passes. Four yes, one absent. Thank you very much. I appreciate well, the extension. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate I you. appreciate it. And I will get any information that Africa or David needs. I will make sure you get that to you. I think, Dan, if you just write a letter memorializing okay. this along right. with the minutes of this meeting, we're good. Okay. I, just, I just wanted to I agree figure 100%. out where you thought we were, right. were going. And then obviously, right. as future projects come up, right. it'll be revisited. Exactly. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so good. much. Okay, uh, moving along, we got number 10's authorization to advertise for the sale of redevelopment owned property at 1037 Kenwood Street. Commissioners. <laughs> You received a letter uh, back in February, February the 11th, from a Miss Shelley Winder. She lives at 1035 Kenwood Street, and she's very interested in 1037 Kenwood Street, which is east of her property. The purpose of her wanting to purchase this piece of land is um, to extend her home into a um, by level. As part of that process to sell the property, redevelopment owned property, we have to have two appraisals. So I put those appraisals in your packets. Um, the median value of those two appraiser, appraisals is $412.50. So all I'm asking is that you give me authorization to advertise for the sale of that piece of property uh, with a bid opening of um, Tuesday, May 15th, at 4.30 and you're at your regularly scheduled meeting. What date was that again? May 15th. Is that the right date? Yeah, can you just tell me what, what the average of the two appraisals are? 4.12.50 cents. Four hundred twelve dollars and fifty cents. Definitely enhance their house. Okay, so because of the lot size, no one else can build on them. Is that exactly? It's just a I'm twenty-five at, foot I'm lot. I'm like, so they just want to extend their home. Right. Exactly. Yeah, because uh, we had this conversation before about lot size. They have to have a fifty-foot. But yeah, okay, 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 okay. I'm fine. Um, Mr. President, I make a motion for the to, for the authorization to advertise for the sale of redevelopment on property at 1037 Kenwood Street. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. And the roll call now. Soto Presley. Yes. Casbricky. Nevejas. Yes. Myricks. Yes. Hopridge. Yes. Motion passes. Four yes, one absent. Thank you. Okay, number 11 is authorization to advertise for lawn maintenance contractors to maintain various redevelopment owned properties. Commissioners, we're going to hold off on this um, at this time, so no action is at, no action is requested on this matter at this time. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, number 12 is an approval of proposing for engineering services for 219 Russell Street from Americal Inc. Good evening, Commissioners. John Blasky with Americo. Mm -hmm. uh, the, for the proposal there for 219 Russell Street is for the asbestos remediation in the, prod in the building um, in preparation for a future demolition, I'm, I'm assuming for demolition. Um, and also it's to uh, investigate the connection between that and the adjacent building, which is um, the Pima building at 5265 Holman Avenue, there's a connection above the alley, and see what we have to do to close that up and put that out for proposals to get the opening sealed up so demolition of that structure can proceed. Commissioners, the property at 219 Russell Street is a multi um, uh, uh, commercial building that has sat vacant for quite some time. So it is our, our desire to demo the building to have additional green space in that area, sort of open up the backs of the buildings that sit on Holman Avenue now so that they can get, um, so they'll be more marketable and more attractive for um, investments and also the existing businesses that are there. So this has been a plan that we've talked about for quite some time, but at this time we wanted to move forward with getting some of the proposals for the engineering services for future demolition of the property. Mr. President, I make a motion for the approval for, of proposal for engineering services for, 12, for 219 Russell Street from Americal Inc. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Yes. 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 Motion passes. Four yes. One. Thank you, commissioners. The uh, number thirteen is uh, same thing. An approval proposal for engineering services for four fifteen Sibley from Americal Inc. Commissioners, this is the Jefferson Hotel. Um, it was adjacent to the J C Penney Building. We designed and bid demolition a year or so ago, and this is for the complete inspection, design, and demolition of this building, Man design, bid, and then manage the demolition process. Commissioners, we were contacted by the owners of um, 415 Sibley or the Jefferson Hotel stating that, that they had a desire to um, sell the property. And so we conducted, we um, ordered two appraisals, received the average of the appraisals. Actually, we're purchasing the building for less than the average of the two appraisals, but they are at this time wanting to sell the property. And because we don't have any use for the property as it is currently as a multi-tenant um, hotel, we want to demolish the property so that we can have additional room for commercial activity in the downtown area. Mr. President, I make a motion for the approval of proposal for engineering services for 415 Sibley, Ave Sibley from Americo Incorporated. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the approval of proposal for engineering services for 415 Sibley from Americo Inc. Can we have a roll call on that? Soto Presley? Yes. Pesbricky? Nevejas? Yes. Myricks? Yes. Hopridge? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, commissioners. One absent. Have a good Thank evening. Thank you, Mr. Rasky. Okay. Uh, number 14 is an approval of change orders for the sports complex. We have three of them tonight. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, <clears throat> The first item we have is uh, change order number one for uh, site services. This is uh, to add an eight foot tall fence uh, behind Carson's um, where the old Woodmore all that west wall. Um, it's a little bit, uh, it was demoed and it was left that way. Uh, so we're adding a fence eight foot tall uh, to cover that uh, once the sportsplex is open. Um, I think it's an economical solution to 
hide that portion from the sports flex uh, once those tenants come in. Mr. President, I make a motion to for the approval of the change order for the sports complex for the change order 001, Site Services, Inc. Second. Have a, a comment for a yes. question. Uh, there was no oh, questions okay, taken, so you'll excuse me if I interrupt. Um, I noticed that to begin with, you started with the, the fence being six foot high, or yeah, six foot high, and then it went to eight foot high. Why? Why is? Why do you have the the variance in height? Uh, the original one was just to get a pricing to see the price difference, to see what two foot taller would add it. Um, and at this time, we recommend the eight foot high fence with the designers and everybody to ha add more coverage to it. Is that like a, a standard height for this type of? of uh, the eight feet or the six feet? The eight feet? Yes, yeah, it's pretty standard. You'll get, uh, you'll cover more of it. Uh, Carson's is pretty tall, so mm -hmm. the more, the higher it is, the more privacy we'll have from covering that. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? No, I have one. Okay, there's a draw motion and a second on the board. Yes. 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 Motion passes. Four yes, one absent. Thank you. Okay, we have another change order. It's uh, 004 for Sweeney Electric Company. Okay, commissioners, for uh, Sweeney Electric, we have three items that are being added. Um, the first one uh, was we were asked to add an outlet at the mezzanine level where the Adding cage is going to be for the possibility of uh, using a pitching machine up there. Um, there was no power nearby, so we're adding an outlet um, up on the second floor. Um, the second one, um, we're adding automatic door operators, which you'll see on the next uh, change order for golf. But uh, this is to uh, provide the power and control wiring for the ADA operators to edit the main entrances. And then the last one is to add uh, occupancy sensors in the soccer area on the south side. There's uh, underneath the track, there's some lights that uh, didn't have any occupancy sensors. So um, it's just to control them better, I'm separate from the closets. Yes. I'm, I'm not quite sure what, can you explain occupancy sensors again? I'm yeah, occupancy sensors is just a lighting control. So when somebody comes in, there's a door on the south side of the soccer area, and if somebody comes in, instead of having to have the light on all, all the time um, oh, okay. or off, so, once they come in, the sensor will turn it on, and once nobody's, there's no motion, they'll turn those lights off okay. by themselves. No problem. I'd like to make a motion to approve change order number four for Sweeney Electric Company Incorporated. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. For change order 004 for Sweeney Electric Company Incorporated. Yes. 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 OK, 
Okay, commissioners, uh, this change order includes four items. Um, the first one is the uh, <clears throat> biggest item, and that's uh, to add the interior and exterior signage. We've had a uh, placeholder in the budget uh, for it. Uh, now we finalized the design uh, for all the exterior and interior signage. And this is for 66 signs on the inside for all the rooms and areas. And um, three big uh, signs on the outside, one on the south side, one near the entrance, and one at the monument sign that's on the corner of 167th and um, Indianapolis. And those are about, uh, the one on the south wall is two foot letters, um, and that'll be high up on that wall. And then near the entry, those are all one foot letters, and on the um, monument sign, there are one foot letters as well. And uh, <clears throat> the next item is the adding the automatic door operators um, for the two um, main two doors at the main entry. Um, and this is strictly for the hardware and installation. Um, the previous one was to add the power to it. Um, <clears throat> the third one is for adding a separate irrigation uh, connection from the east uh, water main uh, that was installed. We originally had a um, the irrigation line coming off of the main water feed um, for the building. Um, we've since been uh, asked that that cannot happen. We have to have its own, it has to have its own separate connection. Um, so this is cause for that. And then the last one is for adding uh, column pads at seven of the steel columns um, that didn't previously have uh, padding in the basketball area. Second. Commissioners. Okay, uh, number 15, uh, reports. Uh, Ms. Afrikataro, would you like to share anything tonight? Yes, Commissioners. On your, I, I believe earlier today, Ms. Miller handed out some tickets for the prayer breakfast, which will be held on the National Day of Prayer on Thursday, May 3rd, from 8 to 10 a.m. at Dynasty Banquets. This year's theme is unity, so we're encouraging all the commissioners to come. It's always a very nice event. Also, I also wanted the commissioners to know that I'll be taking two classes because I'm currently trying to pursue my certification in international economic development. So during the month of May, I'll be taking two classes. One will be on, re on real estate development, and the other one will be workforce development. So after these classes, I have about two or three more, and then I can sit for the test. Second.
Yes. 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 Motion passes. Four yes, one answer. Okay, uh, number 17 is uh, name on finished business. And what do we do at the end tonight? Yes. Welcome, Mr. Bowman. Good evening. How are you? Does everybody have a copy of the document that says agreement for engineering services? Yes. Um, this is in relationship to the Ice Cube project. This is an agreement between the Redevelopment Commission and Taranga Engineering to <clears throat> design uh, two parking lots. Um, we've talked about that there would be a parking lot at the northwest, northwest side of the building, which would be the southeast corner of 175th Street and JF Mahoney Drive. And then we have since talked about a second parking lot that would go on the east side of the Ice Cube building um, it would be inside the fenced area that serves the uh, soccer field and the um, uh, baseball field. Um, there's a grass area there that surrounds the sanitary district lift station. So there's th this contract is for the design of those two parking areas, as well as the subdivision of the property and some of the inherent uh, uh, design issues related to uh, accomplishing all that. Do you have any questions about this? I don't. Okay. If you are inclined to approve it, we just um, ask that you make any approval subject to any technical review by the attorney. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again? If you are inclined to approve it, we just ask that the approval be subject to the technical review by the attorney. So moved. Second. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. Thank you for your assistance on that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. There's no further questions or discussion. Two parking lots and uh, give me a roll call. Silva Presley? Yes. Chester Key? Yes. 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 Yes, motion passes, four yes, one absent. Okay, uh, number 18's uh, public comment. Anybody like to come forward? Since it is open now, you have three minutes. Mr. President, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second. Can all signify by? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Meeting is adjourned.